You're about to listen to Tadpog. Tyler and Dave play old games. It's a comedy video game podcast. We would like to stress that the hosts are not experts and are really just very crass commentators. Seriously, this is an explicit podcast that happens to talk about video games sometimes. So please enjoy this pretty okay podcast with Tyler and Dave. Hello, Internet. Welcome back to another Tadpog podcast. Welcome to our heightened reality. Yeah. <laughs> that you're part of by listening to this. Hell yeah. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. I was trying really hard for not to be hot in here when we got here. That's been on for like an hour. <laughs> uh, it's not too bad. It's not here. Too, it's it's manageable. It'll, It'll cool get off. Cooler. It'll yeah. cool off. So. I did take my socks off, so that helps. <laughs> <laughs> I took my underwear off. Hey, there you go. So that helps. I wish I'd have thought of that. <laughs> it's not too late. It's, it's always like, taking my underwear off is always like on the table. But then I'm like, man, I do maybe want to rewear these shorts but this is, before is I have to wash them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was on Reddit earlier today, and someone said, someone posted a thread or something about what do you wear. If, like, what's your nudity level at home? And a lot of people weighed in and were like, it's just me and my wife, so, or my partner, or whatever, so we're mostly naked all the time. And, but we have a That's rule uh, no, no sitting on the couch without it's a like blanket, Seinfeld no, style. no bare bottom, bare <laughs> buttholes on couches. That was a really common theme throughout the, Interesting. Throughout the thread. That seems like. I don't know. I'm I'm surprised. I get it. I understand. I do why. too. I would but probably at the same want to time. Be the same I mean, way. it's like you touch it, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's just in consideration for anyone else that might come over at some point. Maybe. But I always assume I w- that bare buttholes have been on people's yeah, couches I assume all, anyway. All the people who have lived there, most of their juices have been on their furniture. Right. Yeah. Uh, if you ever buy yeah, like a used a couch, thing. just keep the black light turned off. <laughs> <laughs> Assume that you you know clean it the best you can and just hope for the best. They, I, every couch I've ever owned has been used. Yeah, so and I'm like middle aged, so that yeah. says something. Like, <laughs> yeah, mine too, and it will always be like that. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I mean, I can never envision buying brand new furniture. We, from I can, store. but it involves having zero pets. Mm-hmm. Like that's the only like that is yeah. the only circumstance because I've thought about it. And Henry a couple has of moved years out? ago, no, he's fine. Okay. I, he's he's cool. He's not gonna tear up the furniture, but like the oh, the my kids will spill shit all over. <laughs> <laughs> the Same. like the dog, then especially the dog and the cats. Will tear, I mean, they tear the furniture up. Mm-hmm. We don't have any trouble with that. We we have once in the thirty years, thirty two years that we've been together for the most for the better part of thirty two years, we have bought one. New, brand new couch and chair. Neither of which we had. You, you, you were on that couch, Dave. Oh the, yeah, the couch okay, that's, that's in that my couch. office. We yeah. bought that one new, but it's so big. We opted to find other furniture for the living room, which turned out to be used furniture that we got really cheap. As we pieced it out, you know, went to like different places and found kind of eclectic pieces to put in the Fraser style liver, Fraser style yeah. exactly but I'll never buy another new couch and chair kind of thing again because everything that you can buy today is either ridiculously expensive or super ugly or even like not made well or too. not made well I mean it's like Nikki and I ordered like um a new bed frame because it was we're having a hard time finding like just a headboard we like we like the bed frame we have. It's tall. It's good for a lot of right. things. <laughs> and we just want a headboard. And yeah. it's like most of them come with a frame. And it's like so we we got one. We ordered one. Well, never. I don't. She's found some others online. It's like I don't think I ever want to order another thing like this online. I want to see it. Yeah, that's the kind of thing you definitely want to have. Like in front of you so you know it was like six the frame came up like six inches off of the ground and it had like so many legs you know how like a bed yes. frame normally has like yes. two legs this one had like 18 so like just constantly both of us constantly stubbing our toes uh, on the on those legs yeah. 
and it was like we got to return this. We got to <laughs> we got to definitely get in touch with uh, this retailer and for send the, it back. For the longest time, we had a bed frame that was someone one of our friends had given us just because they were getting rid of it, and we happened to see whatever on Facebook, and so we went and got it. And it was great, but at some point it just didn't fit like the style of the room at the time. You know, sure. Tony likes to rearrange and decorate and things, so we we repurposed it. We we I like got a nail gun and we like put shiplap on it uh -huh. and painted it and stuff, and that worked really well. Like re repurposing it, and then I reinforced it. You know, made it stronger in places where I felt like it was not sturdy enough and things like that. But then we bought a new mattress, and it, when we bought the mattress, it had a deal that we got a basically a really well discounted frame and headboard that came with the mattress, and we got lucky on that one, except for the one part, which is the toe stubbing. Oh uh, man! There's a, there's a there's a piece that comes down right in the middle on either side of the bed. And we've had this bed now for like eight months, and I still hit my foot on that at least once a week. And so, yeah, it's so we've determined through the process of elimination in this conversation, mattresses are not furniture; they don't count as furniture. Because you said you had a new, you got a new mattress. We did get a new. I've mattress. had a new mattress before. So when I was making the mm -hmm. statement saying i've never owned new furniture mattress was like that's mattress a is not different. that's like a big pillow that's a big that's pillow soft. That's furniture's hard furniture hard is hard yeah. <laughs> fact number one soft. let's pull out the whiteboard and soft. Start writing <laughs> these down. Yeah. One. furniture yeah. is hard <laughs> soft furniture not exist. Not, not furniture <laughs> yeah my advice is to go to secondhand stores and like um the shed here in town you can no, fuck the shit. Well, <laughs> unless you're Tyler, and unless you're trying to buy a steam cooker, uh, the shed sometimes has good stuff that's priced reasonably, you know. So you're not. We bought two chairs for the living room. One, like a straight back sort of like easy chair for me. Yeah, but it doesn't like recline or anything. It's just a chair. I don't dig on a recliner. I I just don't. Man, if we had recline. room for one. I'd be I'd be down. For but that recliner. couch that I have in my office is a dual recliner. Oh, but I never I didn't know that. I never yeah, used the wall, it. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. So there's in my office there's no room to yeah. recline it. So I don't even have it plugged in because it's power. Oh, a power recliner. But anyway, like a fancy. And we, so we bought that. Yeah, like first class <laughs> all the way, baby. We bought that those ch two chairs, and I happened to find a chair for her at a consignment store on a day where they were like. If you pay cash, you get 60% off the asking price. Yeah, that's great. And so I ended up getting her cha the chair for her for like 40 bucks, which is normally like 100 bucks is what they were asking. And then we bought a couch at the shed. So, But all in, we only paid about 400 bucks total. The couch was kind of pricey, but we only paid about 400 bucks total and – Versus the couch that's in my office and the chair that is now in my grandson's bedroom, which was like fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred dollars after it was yeah. all said and done. That so sounds about right for new. It's furniture. too much. It's, yeah, it's just a lot. too much. Yeah, I don't like shopping for furniture. I I don't like shopping. Period. I really, really don't like shopping for furniture. That's Me why. Neither. Like we, like we have. Uh, never had a headboard. <laughs> never. Yeah, right. ne we have ne Well, I take it back. We did have that headboard that we ordered for like, we had that one for like three days. <laughs> we were both like, nope, not going to work. <laughs> um, well, you had a headboard. It was called the wall of your bedroom. Yeah. Right? Well, I've had that one for a really long time. <laughs> yeah. You could get the opposite end of the spectrum, which uh, Nicole Nance of Tadpog Sweetheart's fame exclusively buys new furniture. Does not buy. Only buys new furniture. Is it because of the stains? Is I have it because no idea. of the? She just said, That's just how our family does it. And I was like, okay, more power to you. All right. Can't wrap my head around it. Might be. Oh, is her family did it? I didn't realize that. I was gonna say it might have something to do with the interior design angle. She might just like she might just furniture. Like furniture. I mean, I kind of get that. Or it's like I like computers. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, like gaming consoles. And it's like, I've never yeah. bought a used computer, and I the and. I mean, I'm not saying I wouldn't, but I probably wouldn't. <laughs> I mean, it'd probably be one of those. I'd buy like, new. Yeah. I'd buy new. 
like the computer I bought this week that comes in handheld form. You got the Steam Deck? I did. I bought a Steam Deck. Hell yeah. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. I sold my Switch mm-hmm. to a friend at work, and I determined her to be trustworthy, so I also sold her my, my account. Uh, my Nintendo account. I won't tell Nintendo. I'm cutting. I'm cutting. <laughs> Shit, I should cut that out. They're starving. They're for everyone pirating their software. Yeah. So. Have you seen the guy who's having to pay for the rest of his life? Yes. I did The literal see that. rest of his life? Yes. Because, God, yeah, because, of the, because of the ROMs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, fuck that. So I wasn't going to do it this way, but if someone that I knew and kind of trusted came along, I was going to offer them the option to buy my account. So I could just kind of be all in with being out from this particular system, this ecosystem. And not that I have anything against it, but I got to narrow my focus here. And I feel like the Steam Deck is going to give me a little bit more versatility than the the Switch. more, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. So I sold it. She, I told, I was selling this thing, and I've got to take it down off of the Discord actually. But I was selling this thing for not. It, it was a practically brand new Switch OLED mm-hmm. with two docks and a pro controller, right? Pro controller, all the bells and whistles, and it was in mint condition. So the she fixins. she bought it. All the fixins. She bought it, and I was like. I have an account that I will be more than happy to transfer and change over to your name. So I removed all like my payment information and stopped the auto renew on subscriptions and stuff. Just loaded and it up with the all the hentai games, they everything, have shop, <laughs> all of them. <laughs> she uh, she's like, well, what games do you have? And I told her. I mean, I didn't even. Re- I probably got in that library a thousand dollars of in. Yeah. Maybe not quite a thousand, but close within seven fifty to a thousand dollars worth of games that I've purchased digitally over the years since the switch came out and she she made me an offer on the account. she's like, "I'll pay you for that and she made me an offer, and I was like, "All right, I'll take it." So we switched <laughs> it over and I got the money, and so it was sure. more than enough to cover uh the cost of the steam hey, bag. Okay. so I'll be having. I ship by the time this airs. I hope I have it, but uh, yeah, I'm getting back. I'm getting into. The, I'm going full steam. I think nice. Yeah, nice. that's right. I think you'll be very, very happy with it. I've yeah, had man. great things, especially like from you, Dave. You know, you mention it a lot when you say I played it on the Steam Deck or I did the. And I'm thinking, you know, that has a place in my life. If that kind of versatility has yeah place in my it's life. handy and i don't even like go to the extent that like most people have, right where it's like i haven't installed windows on it plenty of people have done that you know lots of people have lots of people have installed things on there that i have it right I'm, i've been pretty like right out of the How can kind of like except yeah. for except for like adding a few things mm-hmm. like um emulators and stuff i'm probably and those roms i got from that guy who's paying nintendo for the rest of his life Uh, (laughs) 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 thanks buddy (laughs) uh but yeah i i hope you enjoy it it's cool i like mine obviously let everyone know as soon as i hopefully i'll have it in my hands by the time we talk again and uh i'll let you know how it worked out for me I've been playing, I finally got the, uh, speaking of the Steam Deck, I finally got the Cuphead DLC. I love Cuphead. Uh, I meant to get the delicious last cor- last course when it came out, but I can't remember what was going on. Something was going on where it was like, oh, I didn't have time to play it or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then um, the Steam sale happened. That's a thing that happened. Mm-hmm. And so it kind of popped up on my radar and I was like, Shit, I never bought that and played that, so I got it. I've been playing that on the Steam Deck. I like it a lot. It's more Cuphead. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, which I liked. Um, at first, I was like, I went into it with like a real, like I guess, suspicious kind of attitude where it's like, I don't know. is this Does this really have the same kind of like feel to it? Is it still like, yeah. does it still have the soul of Cuphead? Mm-hmm. Uh, and it does. It was just one of those things where it was like, it because it's 
Cuphead was so different when I first played it. Mm. It was so different than anything else I'd ever played. And this is just more of that. So it didn't have that same impact where it was like, oh my God, I'm playing a cartoon. It was right. like, that was already baseline where it's yeah. like, I'm playing a cartoon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but yeah, it's cool. They got like some, I, have you, I don't know, have you guys played it? I've played I Cuphead, but not, not the, not the, not the uh, DLC, not the new. It's got some, it's got some really cool levels going on like there's one where i'm not all the way through it i'm maybe like halfway through it or whatever but like i'm playing it very casually not very like different from when i originally played cuphead because that was like one of the earliest games that i streamed and not really one of the earliest but i streamed all of the cuphead and that was fun doing it that way um but like that was an instance where it's like okay i'm gonna sit down i'm gonna play cuphead for three hours and then tomorrow i'm gonna play cuphead for three hours and then I got, and then it was done kind of deal. This has been very, especially since I'm playing on the Steam Deck, it's like, all right, I'm going to play this level. Okay, it's been 15 minutes, going to set it down. And then, like, later that night, come back, resume, and then start oh. playing that level again. Uh, so I've been playing it in a really different kind of yeah. way. Um, and it's still, I mean, I feel like that, for me, that, like, is way better now, you know? Right. Uh, but there's, like, so many cool things. Like, there's a there's a level on there where it's, like, you do, they still have like the airplane flying levels and stuff where you turn into like a, a, a ship or something. Uh, but there's, so you complete one of those and then you immediately go to an airplane hangar. And I'm like, what the fuck? You're going to make me do two of these in a row? I like those okay, but I prefer the, the run and gun mm -hmm. boss battles better. Um, and I'm like, damn it. Okay, I guess I got to do another one of these. Um, and then it turns out, no, you don't. You're like, you're, you're, it's a run and gun, but you're standing on like the top of the biplane, and so it's oh, like with you, the wolf. Oh, cool. yeah, the do the all the dogs, yeah, yeah. yeah. and it because uh, it's like it's a three phase fight where it's like there's this bulldog and like he's shooting at you uh, in a plane. He's up top of the screen, and you're down at the bottom. And as you move to the right of the biplane, you can fall off of it. Oh shit! Off of the wing, but if you just stay on the right side, the pilot uh will start moving the plane whatever direction you're standing oh so it's kind of your way of controlling yeah so you oh, can control neat. it's like a platform that you can control i've uh, got that game i uh, may have to pick up that dlc before the summer sale ends i i mean i like it a lot yeah. if you liked cuphead i did i didn't play through it as much as i sh like as far as i wanted to but i may big fan yeah, big fan. It's cool. good. I'm looking forward to getting through it. That what that last phase where the con the controls invert. <laughs> yeah, all like, of a sudden that's where I was like, this is where I would be like, oh, can't it's, do it. It's not can't that. It. It's not that bad because I the first time that happened because what does happen in the third phase after you beat that that bulldog flying the plane like his pups like explode out of the plane and you have to fight them. They're really easy. That whole phase is just the farm um the uh the parries you know you can parry mm -hmm. like pink items to fill up your cards and yeah. when you have enough cards you have a special i swear that's all those dudes are there for those little puppies is to fill up your gauge so that the moment the the final phase shows up you just launch the nuke mm -hmm. and then you just have to survive for a little bit because tyler's right the the screen the stage rotates 90 degrees oh god <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, so no. it's like uh left is still left but you go down on the screen because it's because it's rotated okay. um so yeah the first time that happened it was like it was immediate death but that's yeah. just the way cuphead <laughs> yeah. for me is because yeah. it's like learning the boss is like every phase is like it's an immediate death when you get to the to the to next, the next phase, phase yeah. yeah it's cool man i mm -hmm. so it's it's nice to go back to that no it's no it's, it looked fun and Kenna always wants me to play it. I'm yeah. just bad at it. I remember you talking about so. it. I'm not good at it either. Oh, and it's not, I don't get like frustrated with it. I just become uh, oh, really self-aware. Like, I <laughs> yeah, am I not that. capable of doing this right now. I'm going to walk away. And yeah. then I'll, yeah, yeah. I'll stay away. And I'll forget about it. Then I'll get back to it. I'll be like, oh, yeah, I remember what the fuck mm -hmm. I was doing. And... I'm still not any better. <laughs> it just takes me a lot longer, I guess, to to pick up on it. Right now, in your statement, right now, I think is the operative phrase. Because I do feel like Cuphead's kind of one of those games where it 
because because of its reputation, and it is a difficult. It game. is hard. I mean, it, it is challenging. Mm-hmm. But I do think it's one of those games that kind of has that reputation that kind of like kind of worms its way in to like your confidence. Sure, because that's yeah. how like all those Dark Souls games are for me. Oh, I think yeah. those are difficult games, but oh. I mean, they have such a. I I've never finished one, and they have such a reputation about them that it's just like it does get to a point where i'm like yeah i don't know that i don't know if i can do this because like part of me wants to try elden ring but i don't know elden ring is (laughs) cool man uh i liked elden ring a lot i did not finish it i often think about going back to it and i didn't finish it because you know how time is Mm -hmm. and it's just like i'm just time poor and it's one of those where it's like, okay, How's time broke today, but we'll <laughs> <laughs> something else came along, and it's like, okay, I'm ready to move on. Um, it's not like it was when I was like eight years old or ten years old, and it's like I got this one game, right? And I'm gonna make it last for two months. Mm-hmm. It's not like that anymore. Ian, what else have you been up to? Well, I've got a little list of stuff to talk about that I watched over the week, but sadly I have to start the list by pointing out that my plans were torn asunder. I was unable to go and see Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny Mm -hmm. uh, over the weekend as I had hoped. It was not destined. Uh, It was not my destiny. Apparently for a lot of people, it was not their destiny to go see that movie. (laughs) (laughs) I've heard good things, and um, so I'm definitely going to go see it, but with... Tanya had messed up her foot, and she's been right. in, a, in a boot. Uh, she's okay. She went to the, back to the doctor today. They said it's not broken. It's just, it's, it's injured, and I'm she's going like I did. We didn't have. To. Oh, she did. <laughs> <laughs> what? She's she she injured her foot, but it's not broken. She just has to wear that boot. Uh, around for the next few weeks. Glad it's not broken. Me too. And she can get around now. Like. But, over the weekend she still hadn't even left the house like doing stairs with was difficult with crutches and everything um so we opted not to try to deal with the movie theater yeah but that makes sense um we will be able to go see it hopefully soon it's still on my list so i did watch a few other things from the comfort of my own home i will say though um at, at, before i start my list uh, this week I did not have time to do a goodie bag. I was too focused on this episode. So we're doing two games. We Makes are sense. doing two games. So there's no goodie bag this week. But I did. I got around to finally watching Dungeons and Dragons. On, oh yeah. on Paramount Plus. Honor Among Thieves. Um, Honor Among Thieves. Very good movie. Yeah, I, liked I it a lot. very much enjoyed it. Cool. I love the casual, laid back presentation. The the humor. Mm-hmm. Thought the cast was great. Yeah, casting's really um, good. Though. Super good movie, so I was really glad to have seen that. Um, the next thing I would recommend... Oh, I give Dungeons & Dragons uh, four stars. Wizards and Sage says check it out. Uh, the next movie I recommend is called Greenland. I don't know if you've ever heard of this movie, but it's got um, Gerard... Trump tried to buy it. Huh? Trump tried to buy it. Yeah, well... Remember that? Remember I'm glad that? he didn't. I don't. I, don't. <laughs> I yeah. missed that he one. He talked about buying Greenland, and Greenland was like, the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> was that before or after drinking bleach? <laughs> well, it cured I COVID. think it was before. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, shit, I'm surprised yeah. I missed yeah. it then. Because after drinking bleach, it was like, okay, I'm going to tune a lot I'm of this done. out. <laughs> <laughs> it will kill COVID. That is a fact. It's a technically the truth. Also killed the, the host of <laughs> the COVID. Uh, it's a, this movie's got Gerard Butler and uh, Marina Bacher and Marina Bacher being Deadpool's wife. Oh, okay. Uh, from the Deadpool movies, um, this one got me. It was a big shock, uh, and I will tell you the premise is that at random, this one guy, this guy who is having trouble with his marriage, gets a text message on his phone while he's at the store saying it is from the Department of Homeland Defense, and they are telling him that he and his family are to pack a bag. It comes over their TV at home, too. Pack a bag. You have been selected, and you must show up at this particular location to be sheltered 
there's an asteroid coming and they have picked all these people so it pre-selected all these people to be in these shelters they get to the shelter and find out that his his little boy his little boy is a diabetic and the government overlooked this and they reject him and so they get separated and the whole thing is him trying to get back to them and get them it's it was an unbelievably a surprisingly good movie hmm, okay uh i do recommend it it's a good popcorn summer disaster movie okay that i f found to be quite well written well produced and very emotional it, it wasn't just um you know armageddon for the sake of armageddon mm -hmm. it told a really touching story and i i cannot recommend it enough is it pretty recent uh it was i, I didn't note that but i want to say it was like 20 i want to say it was really recent like 2022 it sounds like it would would be it's, I mean. it seemed pretty fairly recent so okay cool um i give that one four stars as well wasn't say says check it out uh the next movie i watched was called you're killing me this is on Showtime right now. You can probably find it at your nearby um, Bay-related convenience store. I don't know how to put this. You could pirate it if you want, I'm sure, is what I'm saying. That's the Nintendo Borrow guy. it from Mr. Bay. Borrow it from Mr. <laughs> Bay. Thank you, Tyler. Um, Are you asking the Nintendo guy? Yeah. <laughs> this, was, this was Anne Heche's last movie. Oh, okay. Before she passed away, tragically. And... Uh, I found it to be very entertaining as well. A uh, young girl, a young woman, I should say, and her friend go to a party at a rich kid's house whose father happens to be a senator uh, to try and get the get the uh, the old the kid that's the senator's son to convince his dad to sign an, sign a recommendation letter for the girl so she can go to a specific college with her friend. And all this is happening in the uh time in, in a time period where a young girl has gone missing and everyone's out looking for the girl and no one knows what's happened. And she goes to the party and shenanigans ensue, and I'm not going to say any more mm. about what happens, okay. but it is uh, a thriller, horror huh. kind of thing. Okay. Um, highly recommend it. Cool. I Again, this was another kind of home run for me. I didn't ex We watched a lot of things that just at random mm -hmm. over the last week. So it was off for like four days, you know, over mm -hmm. the holiday weekend and stuff, and we watched a lot of stuff and got some really good surprises. So that's the the next one I recommend. Three and a half stars. Was and say just check it out. You're killing me. Uh, You're killing me. You are killing me. You are killing me. I had me. a dream and the hamburger was eating me. All I've got remaining on my stuff I watch list is Demon Slayer. I'm still not through it, mm -hmm. which is why I don't have a goodie bag because I mm. predicted I would be through it and I am not. Uh, still enjoying it very much. I've made it through the Mugen Train episodes, and now I'm on to the stuff I haven't seen yet. So I'm slowing okay. down, trying to take my time with it a little bit to soak it in. Sure. Uh, and then I've also picked back up on Hell's Paradise. Yeah, I need to because I, I got current with Hell's Paradise, and then I went on a work trip and fell off. So right. we're, I know it's wrapped up. I think we're missing I am, like four episodes. The fast, yeah, fast I'm still episodes. about four episodes from finishing. Um, still really weird. Still really good. I will keep everyone posted. And Dave, I'm sure we'll have plenty to talk about. A la I think that was a Chainsaw pretty... Man. I'm not positive because I didn't read it, but I think Hell's Paradise is a pretty short manga series. So I think I feel like it's one of those anime where it's like... We're going to get a resolution. It's, yeah, it's, it's probably, probably going to keep like, going. Yeah. Un unless they do unless something. they do <laughs> right unless they're like yeah fuck yeah it's doing well which i don't know if it is right i have no idea how I well anime does i don't either None. i watch stuff <laughs> and then either i'm like hey there's more or right. oh fuck there's not any more yeah. of this it's been out oh jesus this came out in 2008 <laughs> fuck <laughs> there's stuff that nikki and i will watch and we'll, uh, we'll get to the end of it and i'm like well i hope that did well enough somewhere for it to merit exactly. more because <laughs> i mean i have a feeling what we think about it doesn't matter yep. <laughs> um i have two 
anime related announcements for anyone that may not be in the know. Uh, the trailer for Attack on Titan, the final season, part two, is out. If anyone's watching Attack on Titan and wants to know what's going on there. And then also, I found out that um, Panty and Stocking with Garter Belt season two is imminent. Yeah. They have put out an official announcement slash trailer for that which is awesome because yeah. i literally it looked a fucking same it too. looks the and that same blew, I, like i was it blew my <laughs> mind and i was happy at the same time same. Like, i can't I know. believe they're doing it it looks the same it's, it's, it's amazing which they needed it, to do oh god it, like immediately to. i'm like how is this gonna do you know what i mean I, like, I don't i hope it does well i hope it does but i also don't think it really matters i don't think it matters either because i think they're that's the show there where they just they don't give a fuck kyler they don't care and they, and that's what makes it so good. Okay. Uh, I was. I was. For a re- mild this was recommended. I talked about the shit. <laughs> God, they have. To I was looking. I was doing. Like, they didn't include that in the trailer, and I was like, God damn it! You got to keep doing. They're just that. Sa- they're saving it. They're saving. Maybe it. they don't want to give anything away. They want to give right? anything away. But like they, they but made they a point. Have to keep doing that. <laughs> they made a point to show you that like thick outline, like Powerpuff Girls yeah. drawing style that like. The original had, and then they also show you the magic girl, uh, horny side. That yes, they also, the standard it's also anime known for part where they, you know, right. take off their panties right. and it becomes their weapon. Right, they show you two sides God, of the triangle, they have to but they do didn't show the third the, side. The, pe- the peak of the triangle, which is the blowing up of the models. Yeah, um, I I was super pumped to have had that recommended to me and. You know, I talked about it recently on the show, and now, right. you know, I can get excited about it. So I'm really glad I'm able to know what's up and get excited about this new season because uh, that is a show that I will definitely be looking forward to more yeah. more content from. So yes. anyway, I think that's all I've got. So. Uh, so over the weekend, it was my birthday weekend. Yeah, happy, no. happy July the weekend. tooth. Happy July the, the tooth. tooth. Yes. Uh, she saw a place online she wanted to go, so we went to somewhere in Nashville called Plaza Mariachi. Okay. Which is like a big indoor one-stop shop, Little Mexico. I was going to say, is it just a? It's a, is it like an El Mariachi that you just live in, I think like so. a restaurant <laughs> that you just stay in for I the know, weekend, like. Casa Bonita, like it was. It's it was Los huge Amigos in mall. colon the hotel. Because <laughs> like you walk in and it is like decked out, you know, very very Mexican themed everything, and there's everything inside of it. You walk in, there's like a greeting desk, and then a big clothing shop with all sorts of traditional clothes. Several little restaurants, um, a salon uh, for hair, nails, eyebrows. Uh, dessert bar, regular bar, arcade. Your eyebrows look great, by the way. Thank you. I Thank didn't you. want to say anything Thank earlier, you. but <laughs> my, my famous, my famous, barely there brows. <laughs> uh, so, but it was cool. I went. They also had a little grocery store attached, so I got some stuff oh, cool. for us to try at some point in time. So we can. I mean, all this will still be good next week if we want to do that for the third segment next week. Yeah, and just FYI, everybody, spoilers, we're not doing a third segment tonight. We're going to go to the game talk and go home. Yeah. So <laughs> my, my, my day shifted real bad at the end there. Yeah, so. yeah we got a late, late start, start, and I'm always eager to be like, cut out the third segment, go, go home early. <laughs> no, get it. It's good. We can do this. What is this device you have? Is this? Have you always had this? Device? Yeah, this is, this is Melissa's laptop, but it also turns into a tablet. Oh, I see. Okay. My printer would not work, so I grabbed her laptop from up for my notes. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. When you gestured, uh, it, I you it looked like you were gesturing at your vape, and I, for a minute I was like, "Is that Tyler's vape?" Yeah, dog. This is Tyler a quiz. blowing Tyler. <laughs> chucking if, clouds. If, dog. If you can tell me what this is, what this device is, I will give you a crisp two dollar. <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see besides that yeah work's been work's been busy the the transition team is finally gone so it's just plain clean up so things are better but it's just very time consuming and there's a lot of stuff that i'm supposed to do and i don't know how to do it no one told me how to do it and people are telling me why is it done 
Yeah. Oh, oh my, so you know. have my job now. I don't know how to do it. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Which my direct boss is like, fuck them. Don't go to any meetings. <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to avoid <laughs> criticism is yep. to just not be He's present. Like, I got your back. My opinion is one that matters. Fuck all the other meetings. People are telling you to go to to yell at you. Nice. Don't go. Okay. That is nice. But, uh, yeah. Do we want to do a draft or anything or go sure. right to the game? Dave, yeah. you got anything else you needed? You wanted to talk about this evening? Uh, I just wanted to mention that the, there's a new Tom Segura special out called oh, Sledgehammer. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have seen it or not. It's really good. It, of course it is because all this stuff. I want to be. Yeah, and that's the opening song. Sledgehammer. And it's also song. a punchline. Does he talk about Garth Brooks in that one? He mentions Garth Brooks, okay. but not. It's not like a. It's like a. It's a throwaway. Where can okay. I see this? Uh, this is on Netflix or you know you wherever you borrow it your from stuff. Mr. Bay. <laughs> the <laughs> guy, the Nintendo guy, probably has yeah. it. Right. I got this guy who lives next door <laughs> named Ron Bay. Evan Bay. Evan Bay. Cuban B. Q ah, Cuban B. <laughs> yeah. It was almost an achievement of mine for one of these games. Is it really? Talk. It was almost. I had, to, I had to explain to Captain Gunner, John Turley, what that. What? The, the Cuban B. That blows thing. my mind. Because we were at work and I, I keep saying it now. Oh, I just God. say it now at random all the time. And he's like, he's like, dude, what is that Cuban from? B. And I'm like, man. Come on. And I brought it up and he's like, oh shit. So yeah. Anytime, so anytime anyone says, uh, like, and they say this all the time in video games, all the time <laughs> in video games, they say this all the time in video games. Uh, someone will say, uh, it's more complicated than that. And I'm like, more complicated than that? They killed Killer B. <laughs> <laughs> Every oh, time, man, shit. I need to. Re I haven't watched Half Baked in so fucking long, but so many of those little things are just I, it like it doesn't come on. Like, we see shit all the time that we have all these things that we watch, you know, all these cute subscriptions and yeah. stuff and movie channels, and I never see Half Baked. I think. Comedy so Central probably nuts. has. I don't want to advertise oh, Jim Brewer. Did Jim Brewer oh, go nuts? I didn't know about oh, that. What oh, happened? Yes. He's on that Roseanne train. Oh, I didn't know. That ultra conservative anti vax oh, no. everything, you know, mass here controlling the world bullshit. I think there was some, I feel like Chappelle said something about it kind of sort of within the last couple of years too that I can't, I wish I could remember what he said. Uh, but yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know that about Jim Brewer. Chappelle That's needs to chill the shame. fuck out too. I don't want to talk about him either. Well, but Half Baked is a great movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I wish it would come on. I, I bet Comedy Central just owns the rights to it, and they played it enough. And it's you in can the contract. only show it on Comedy Central for the rest well, of. Well, when John Stewart left, they couldn't show it as much. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Have you ever tried watching Half Baked <laughs> on <laughs> weed? <laughs> well, any ideas for any drafts? I'll consult the list. Game shows. Yeah. <laughs> Part two. We could, do tw we could do 30 more easily. <laughs> Y'all seen that crazy sphere in Las Vegas? No. Oh, my God. You've got to look up the Las Vegas sphere and check this thing out. It's oh, insane. Fuck. This is a thing I should have seen in person when I'm, I was in Vegas? Well, it wouldn't have been turned on when you oh, were in okay. Vegas. They turned it on. It's this... It's this m enormous, it's the largest man-made dome. The largest copy of Sphere by Michael Crichton. <laughs> <laughs> no in existence. It's, it's on VHS. Yeah, it's on tab <laughs> own tablets. <laughs> no, it's a giant sphere in Las Vegas that is like the largest dome, the largest spherical object ever created. But it's a huge display, like a a ultra oh, high hubris. resolution screen. <laughs> Oh, okay. And like they just blast pornography constantly. <laughs> no, but I mean it's crazy. Like they'll make it look like a basketball. So it looks like there's a enormous How big is it? It's enormous. Like I mean, does it cover like put it in like in city blocks? How big is it? A city block. A sit one city block. A okay. Big city block. I was like really shooting for the moon here. <laughs> Four hundred <laughs> city That's blocks. That's huge. But yeah, I was like I was like, how big? Is it like Stephen <laughs> King's the dome? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's it's big it's that big. 
That's big. It's as big as the dome in the book. The, the dome. dome. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. Like, and they keep they put all this crazy. They made it look like an eye once, yeah, like the cool. eye of Sauron, and they made it look like a basketball. Apparently, they fired this thing up for the first time on Independence Day. Okay, this year. Yeah, and so. It, it just kind of blows my mind. So I'm like scrolling through TikTok uh -huh. and like just 12 different TikToks about this thing came up and each one had a different picture of the images on it. And I was just, I'm just fascinated by I this I thought you thing. were going to say each one had a different robot voice. The dome in Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, top five spheres. I don't know. You can do that while your favorite circles. <laughs> <laughs> favorite circles. Favorite circles. Um, okay, all right. No, I'm kidding. I can't come up with five <laughs> you of got my this. favorite circular. Th is it circular things? Circles, pretty open ended. All right, I will try my best. <laughs> okay. Under the sphere draft. Yeah, sure. The sphere okay. draft. Well, the circle draft. Circle draft. Spheres. Spheres are also circles. It, spheres will yes fall into yeah. the acceptable. Yeah, you got some paper? Category nah. of answers. Got all your spheres committed to memory. Yeah. My pen. My pen. Here, let me put that in the show notes. All right. Man, what? that one. My, oh, this kids in the hall <laughs> sketch. Yeah. That kids in the hall sketch. Like that one. I don't know why that one has stuck with me for. I, I don't know either. It. The only other one that stuck with me that like I remember <laughs> really well, and I still haven't watched the new kids in the hall. I've got oh, dude, to do it's that. Great. Was it was the one where he was sitting down at the dinner table, and like talking about how the soup had too much salt in it, to his wife. He's he just kept like emphasizing the fact that the soup had too much or the whatever the food was. I said soup. It might not be soup. Was that Bruce McCullough? It was soup or salty? I don't remember. Damn, I, don't I just remember, remember the one. like broad strokes of the sketch, uh -huh. and then my pen. My pen. I remember he tied it to his head so someone with a thing, a little <laughs> bouncy thing, so someone couldn't steal his pen. Top five circles. Well, I'm about to even say it. So, um, we do me one and two, Dave three. Sure. Then we'll play clockwise based on this D6 divided by two. Six divided by two, three, Dave. Boobs. Boobs. Yeah, boobs. I guess it would be boob, but one's better than none. Boobs. I felt like the Family Feud showdown. <laughs> I buzzed in as fast <laughs> as I could. <laughs> boobs. Boobs. Naked grandma. Naked grandma. <laughs> <laughs> Ian. Pizza. Damn it. Uh, my favorite circular. A butt. Damn it! That was going to be my number two! <laughs> <laughs> Shit, the fandom's been divided. But I'm saying, I'm, I feel like we're the reverse of those people, too. <laughs> I'm a butt and you're a boob? A, a butt guy and a boob guy. Oh, I thought you were a butt guy. No, I'm a boob guy. Oh. I, thought you I was not a butt guy until my wife, because my wife's butt's amazing. I'm just a, my wife's butt guy. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I'm a, I'm a boob guy. Uh, okay. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm a whole package kind of guy. I'm, I'm fine. With, I'm, <laughs> I'm fine to kick tires, check it all out. My, <laughs> my favorite thing about women wasn't on the list of boobs and butts. It's not circular. But it's not circular. <laughs> part of it is. <laughs> it's more, it's more of the it. part that's missing. <laughs> It's more triangular. Uh, I'm going to go with, since you said naked grandma, I'm going to go with Steve Harvey's head. Okay. It's <laughs> yeah. pretty good. Ian. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the Las Vegas sphere because yeah, this good. week it is one of my favorite circular objects. That's and good. Captain America's shield. That's good, too. Oh, damn. That is a good one. So we're doing like top, tw we're doing 20? On this track. Top 20 circles? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with the, the big wheel on Price is Right. Ooh. Uh, I love that. 
I'm going to crib from Dave a little and say, Wheel of Fortune. There you go. The Wheel, the wheel. of Fortune. I watched that the other night for the first time in a long time. You hear they're going to put Ryan Seacrest as the host of that show now? Yeah. Did we talk about that here? No, it was you, on the Discord. You posted it on the Discord, or Tyler did. And I, I was initially like kind of shook by that, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let it slide. I'm going to give him a chance. Sure. Why not? I mean, it's Wheel of Fortune it's for real. Christ's sake. Yeah, he'll be fine. Yeah, he'll be fine. Yeah, he hosted American. He hosts American Idol. If he can deal with hosting that shit, maybe he'll just maybe he'll bring his inner Pat Sajak out and just be fine hosting mm -hmm. the Wheel of Fortune. I'm still waiting for Jason Lee to actually be a game show host. <laughs> I think he was at the end of the I have a, I, I I'd want have a so soft bad. time taking him seriously as yeah. a game show host. Yeah, right? I, know, <laughs> I, know, and I want I, this pain. That's what I want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but can, I was watching TV earlier today, and Pictionary is a thing. I saw that, too. How weird is that? I also saw Pictionary. The guy uh, um, from the guy from Stand By Me, the guy that was... Uh, the dead body. The The... <laughs> The one from Piranha. He's been in so many other things that people yes, will right. know. Yeah. Jerry O'Connell is the host of Pictionary. Oh, okay. Which is just, that explains why he was there on the TV. Yeah, it <laughs> threw me off. And he gets kind of he gets kind of militant when time's about to run out. He's like, mm. "Gonna need an answer." I'm like, damn, Jerry, chill, man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Tyler, Pac Man. Oh, it's pretty good. Pac, good man. call. Pac Man. I will go with. Um, <laughs> I will go with Mohawk and Headphone Jack's favorite item, the, the compact disc. Ah. Mm, good. I'm just going to go with the wheel just, just, in general. Just the wheel. How, where would Double we down. be? Where would we be without wheels? Yeah. On our like, I, you tires. know, Wheel of Fortune is a wheel that brings good fortune or possibly unfortunate bankruptcy, bankruptcy <laughs> within the universe of uh -huh. wheel of fortune but wheels in general like on cars uh -huh. and on chopping uh -huh. carts uh -huh. and wheelchairs wheels and this gotta chair them. gotta have them yeah i'm gonna say ritz crackers okay ritz crackers okay uh, i'm gonna go with kung lao's hat the one that has a razor sharp mm -hmm. edge that he uses mm -hmm. to cut mm -hmm. people's heads off when he finishes them. I love not in I a sexual love manner Kung or Lao's also hat. in a sexual manner. <laughs> <laughs> when he does it in a sexual manner, it's got feathers on it. <laughs> <laughs> Fatality tickle. <laughs> Finished. <laughs> my my next one is going to be the um Dial on an iPod shuffle. Uh, Very satisfying clicking mm -hmm. dial on the iPod. The you old iPod. Remember when the old iPods got real popular for a minute when Baby Driver came out? Yeah. I knew people who were like, I got my original. I'm selling it on eBay for $1,000. <laughs> yeah. That is an excellent time to make that move. I still have my original 275 gigs of storage. It's nice. Yeah. Yeah. My my video iPod cracked. I get it was in my jacket pocket. This is a long time ago. So my I have like a long jacket and it was in my pocket. I don't know why I kept it in my side pocket. Ridiculous. And I slammed my car door on the Oh, oh, oh fuck. Sucks. It it was old at that point, but still yeah. it sucked. Yeah. It was like God ugh. What shit on there you want, yeah. I watched yeah. an entire I watched all seasons of all current Star Trek episodes on an iPod video yeah. uh, over the course of my employment at Harrah's. <clears throat> and I downloaded them to this device and then I would sit by myself in the cafeteria at lunch and watch Voyager or Next Gen or something. It is on a so tiny little screen. Now I can just stream to think it. about that. Oh, I loved it. Yeah, I me too. I mean, I love it mine is, too, but like thinking wonderful. that was like, what the fuck are we doing? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, God, I was so pumped about my iPod video, man. I, the fact that I could watch TV shows on a device in the palm of my hand. Mm. 
Season three of The Office on a dashboard for 27 hours. Uh Yeah. Yep. I've done that. (laughs) This is the future. And that's like, I know we've talked about this before, but like, like the first generation of apps when it was just like every other word someone said was app. Uh huh. (laughs) Yeah. We were here for that. You seen these angry birds? (laughs) (laughs) Played a lot of angry birds. My last one is cookies. Cookies. Mm, cookies. Cookies. Because originally I was like, Homer Oreos. Oh, I don't know. Let's go a little more broad. Just cookies in general. Yeah. Cookies. That's pretty good. That's a fast one. A lot of circular things out there yep. to love. Yeah. R- honorable mention for me, the world. Eh. <laughs> the moon. The moon. Is yeah. a good circle. Sphere. The sun. Yeah. Let, okay. Let me just say. Uh, <laughs> let me just say. Uh, p- planetary objects. <laughs> Biblically accurate angels. <laughs> Not all of them are circles. <laughs> that one scary one. <laughs> that one. That's scary all circles. One. <laughs> bubbles. It's all eyes. It's all circles. I like bubbles. Oh yeah, there you go, bubbles. All right, you guys to take a break and then talk about. GP1, GP1 Part 2. GP1, GP1 Part 2. The first time we mentioned that this episode, which I love, by the way. (laughs) You saw the title. You saw the thumbnail. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) You know the fuck we're talking about. Bullshit. (laughs) I have some things to say about it. I do, too. I'm prepared today. I'm kind of almost there. We will be right back after these words from possibly Miss Cleo. Who knows? Someday, when I get a big promotion, I'm going to use some of my money to do some good in this world. Someday, when the kids... Are Someday. It's a wonderful thought. But for Tad Pog hosts... Born into poverty, few of us can ever imagine. Someday won't be soon enough. Without your help now, their lives will be shattered by hunger and disease before someday ever comes. Many will never have a chance to go to school. And some, some simply will not survive even until tomorrow. Fortunately, there are many people in this world who didn't wait to help. Instead, they called 2708832555. The sponsor of Tad Pog hosts through patreon.com slash tadpog or pisstasters.com. Please write the number down while I introduce you. Tyler and Dave and Ian. Did I say it right? Tyler and Dave and Ian. Yes. For several years now. Tyler and Dave and Ian. Has received help. From a patreon.com slash tadpog or pisstasters.com. Sponsor Mrs. Peggy Andreka, who works in a retail store. Now, though he knows her only from letters and a photograph, she is one of the most important people in his life. Life is extremely difficult in the dry bush country where Tyler and Dave and Ian lives. The family has a hut, some goats, but very little else. Yet, thanks to the $25 a month his sponsor sends to patreon.com slash tadpog or pisstasters.com. Tyler and Dave and Ian is able to attend school near his home. He also receives basic medical care and nutritious meals. Against all odds, Tyler and Dave and Ian is first in his class. His sponsor must be very proud. This young man's sponsor is not a wealthy person. She simply saw a need and responded. Won't you do the same? Patreon.com slash Tadpog or Pistasters.com. The world's oldest and most respected podcasting organization. We've seen what wonders can be accomplished when you approach enormous problems one ch- Tadpog host at a time. Call 2708832555. And we'll send a photo and story of a Tadpog host whose life you can change for just $25 a month. There's a Tadpog host out there who needs you now. Please, let someday be today. We're back. Potentially sounding different. We're going to sound, we probably sound a lot better. (laughs) You know why? Because the engineer wasn't paying attention and recorded the first half of the show on internal microphone, the dreaded internal mic. Yeah. So it'll either be that or, or we've got the backup device, but I'm a little worried about the, the levels on it being hopefully not too low, but they look pretty low. Well, I apologize for that, everyone. Um, shit happens. Get over it. 
Well, we'll just have AI. We'll turn this into a script for uh, that AI can transpose, and then because <laughs> I say type that, it all up. Did anyone here see? Okay, did you look for a SNES drum for him for him to cover? I didn't. Okay, so he did not. He did not, has not covered these games. However, it's fucked up. Somebody made an AI version of his voice to cover these games. What? So there is an AI SNES What channel drunk. is that? Is it called AI SNES drug? It's, uh, I have to find it. It's, it's like a random name and his blurb was like, I don't mean to offend anybody. I'm just a big fan. And I don't mean to offend anybody, even though game. I'm saying this because I know that I will. Yep. And it's <laughs> like, he doesn't have like, and it fucking sounds, it fucking sounds just like SNES drunk. I mean, oh, that's the no. shit where it's like, Crazy. when the sentence starts with, I'm not racist, but like, <laughs> you know, you fucked up. Like this guy knows. It's like, I don't mean any offense. <laughs> okay. I mean this in the best possible way. That doesn't make it okay. <laughs> so yeah, I was funny. like, this is weird because it sounds 90% like him. Yeah. There's just some weird inflections at points and it's, he's kind of flat, but otherwise, man, it sounds just like him talking about GP1 and GP1 Part 2. Man, and there's like, I don't know if you, I don't, I'm sure you guys have fucked around with chat GPT. I know you have, Ian. Yeah. Have you fucked around with it, Tyler? Not really. I have been tempted to like just start a YouTube channel, not say anything to anyone. Cause I've done this on chat GBT where it's like, so chat GBT, write me a five minute YouTube script on the revenge of Shinobi. And then it does. And then it's now you can just, I don't now put it to SNES drunk's voice. Right, but man, we're done. Put some footage behind that. And we're done. Let the numbers roll in. Let, those, let that money start coming in. Welcome baby. to SNES drunker. Here we go. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, <laughs> what's going on? I propose that we. Oh. I propose that we have we have Chat GPT do an entire episode. An entire episode. One one <laughs> time. You, no, because that's Pandora's <laughs> box. Just, you do one. I'll be like, oh, I don't feel like doing it this week. Ah, let the robot do it Give again. The robot. <laughs> <laughs> ah, people love the robot. <laughs> <laughs> Our Patreon donations have tripled. That would be a good every like if everyone says what topics they want it to cover, and then we rip our voice like this guy did and have a complete AI generated episode based on whatever topic and throw it up on Patreon. Yeah. Or, or no, just that's just a show now. <laughs> I'm down. Why not? No, oh, damn. All right, but the meat of the show, GP1 and GP1 Part 2. Mm -hmm. For the Super Nintendo. Yep. Because we're playing through all the Super Nintendo games. Allegedly. We haven't mentioned that in a while. <laughs> but yes, allegedly, we're playing through them all. And at least until we decide to start going through the 100 of George Bush Jr.'s favorite video game yeah man well, we've covered, <laughs> we've covered I know. a lot I was, of them i was I going know. through the list just to see how many of those it's like yeah done that done that oh that's a good one we haven't talked about <laughs> a lot of them are like shitty ones the randomizer has chosen <laughs> <laughs> all right so the box art for gp1 part one and gp1 part two kind of hard to not a fun thing to say it's kind of hard to play. Kind of hard to be um, anything, but yeah, it's fine on the box art. It's great. The pictures of motorcycles. Yep. I want to know where I can purchase the motorcycle that has the two large Atlas decals on them because um, I feel like that's pretty great. I want the RPG motorcycle. The one that on the cover. Yeah, it has Atlas. I've never. It has oh, the, the logo, Atlas logo. The, uh, the company. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. Custix, custom the Persona job. folks. <laughs> <laughs> I want them, I want someone to mod this game and put um, the bike, the motorcycle from Akira in it. I think that would be a good addition. I think that I was going to say this later in the show, but. It is really hard to go back to 2D racing games after the invention of 3D video games because um, in Agreed. comparison, they are horrible. 2D racing game, like once you've played a 3D racing game, 2D racing games are like really, really hard to go back to, especially when they're trying to do it in a realistic fashion. If it's like 
old style, like early 80s when they're like, we can't make this shit look real. So we're going to make it abstract as fuck. Camera's going to be up above, looking down. Car's going to be a block. It's best we can do. (laughs) We're going to deal with it. Then it's like so abstracted that it's still a racing game, but it's like, it's, it's like, okay, all right, this is, this is. Terminator 2, you're on a most motorcycle, <laughs> ramp, other motorcycles, don't hit anything. You're made of rubber. Yeah, bad, <laughs> bad example of the, the top overhead. Maybe I should clarify. Um, but like, as I was playing these games, which I don't think are bad games, but, uh, but still, as I was playing them, I was like, boy. It is hard to go back to 2D racing games. These mode seven like track 2D racing games, I think are really it's a really, really tough sell. And you used to have this motorcycle. No, well, there was one that was a motorcycle, but I had the one that was a car and it was this pla- it was a toy. It was this big plastic sort of dashboard with a steering wheel yeah, on okay. it. Yeah, okay. And it had this like the thing that would it was like it wasn't a screen, but it was like this like conveyor belt inside of it that just ran. Yeah, yeah, I know those. Yeah, for like your drive. Yeah, that's what this felt like. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like what a two D game yeah. feels like. Because like three D games, three D racing games, like instantaneously, they're more they're more immersive, and I feel like. I remember playing, even in the 90s, man, playing like 3D, like motocross games and stuff where it's like, oh, I can feel where I am in space. Like I can get a grip of where I am and see the turns that are coming up because it's not just flat. I'm not racing on a flat plane. I'm racing on um, like a a map that has depth height and depth Mm -hmm. and i can see the valleys and i can see the hills and that gives me some kind of like intuition i can use intuition at that point to be like okay there's going to be a curve here there's going to be a straightaway there right that makes such a big difference i mean such a big difference because like mini maps can only go so far Mm -hmm. they can only get you so far and then when you're like when you're like going at crazy speeds, it becomes like super fucking difficult. To what do like you mean? Navigate. You had trouble navigating hairpin turns at 300 kilometers per hour. These games were so fucking hard, <laughs> so fucking hard. hard. And like GP Part One, you make me feel much better saying that, dude. Dude, GP One, <laughs> I thought was like, fuck, I'm getting my ass pounded into the dirt. And then I was able to, one of the things I love about this game, GP1, is it works on that Gran Turismo, Gran Torino kind of style (laughs) where it's like you gain money and then you take that money and you put it into your bike. and Which is an excellent thing. I love it. I love that. It's on my list of good. Mine too. But what... (laughs) You guys got money? (laughs) Even if you lose, they're you like, lose, they're, you get like, I took all my losing, dollars. yeah, I took all my scraping like fifteenth place, and I finally was able to buy something, and I noticed the difference, and that was like, that was a good feeling because it was like, oh shit, okay, that made a difference. That was a buying that was a good upgrade because like now I'm getting like sixth place, and I thought that element was was really cool. That's like a long, super long walk for me to say that in GP Part 2 where they don't do that. um, That game is probably... GP Part 2 is probably the hardest racing game I have ever fucking played, man. Because like that was one where it was like... You make the tiniest mistake and it's like 50 (laughs) plays. Everyone... like I, I, I failed to qualify... For anything I tried to do on one and two. Could not do it. Last place. Ever I mean, no. No. I so broke, you saying they were hard, I was like, okay. Good. Yeah, man. I good. think they were I think GP part two I especially. Suck, but at least I suck at a at a hard game. <laughs> <laughs> I th- I think it was really difficult. I I'm, do think I I looked at these games through the lens of having just played Kawasaki Superbike Challenge. Me too. And Caribbean Challenge, yeah. whatever the fuck it was. You got and it. What it what it made me realize was that despite the fact that the things that it has going against it for me 
are that, number one, I could give a shit about Grand Prix motocross racing. I don't follow it. I appreciate it. Sure. It's so, but it's not my genre. And number two, it's, it's just a racing game in general, which I like racing games, but I don't go out of my do way too. to play them. I, I will play them, but I was able to look at this from a different perspective and say I can appreciate these games for what they are and how much more of a value they would be for someone that is a fan of the genre. Yes. Uh, and how pissed off I would be if these existed and I bought the Kawasaki right. one instead. Yeah, there are w definitely way, way, way worse racing games uh -huh. on the Super Nintendo. And this cemented yeah. this cemented for me the thing we came up with on the Kawasaki about the the Kawasaki games being a blatant advert games. Right. Yeah. That they just had no substance and no depth and nothing to them. They were just advertising Kawasaki, whereas these were true racing games made for the fan of the genre right so yeah totally and i think like like i was saying earlier i don't even think these are bad games mm -hmm. i just I think they're good games. i think they're good games i just think that they're like not very interesting in the year of our lord 2023 mm -mm. first of all and i know that's i mean take that as you will a lot of the games we talk about that are you know 30 plus years old. They are a product of their time up, that but, don't stand right. the test of time. I mean, because right. really, yeah. this, is, this is a sports game. This is it a sports game. It absolutely is a sports game. It falls into all the other trappings of a sports game. And in that, if you're, yeah, you have to be the kind of person. Like, yes. like me, if I played it then, if I'd played it now, I'd feel the exact same way. I can see where somebody would like it, but to me, they're hard and they're boring. I didn't, Agreed. I, I thought they were hard. I didn't think they were. I didn't think they were boring, but I think that's just because I like racing games mm -hmm. more than than you do. Yeah. You know, like it, it's a little more yeah. interesting. I, don't know, to I me. can see where people will dig it, but I just think I found I boring. do like racing games, and I also found it to be boring. The, what what frustrated me about it was thinking about the amount of time that would have to go in memorizing each of the oh courses in order to be good at mm -hmm. it, and that's like not going to fly. And that's one of the that's like one of the little bullet points under when I say it doesn't hold up in 2023 because it's like with all the options that we have of all the stuff that we can play why in the world would you know this yeah. doesn't have anything that would pull me back mm -hmm. this uh, is ball in a cup it is to, ball in a cup <laughs> yeah. compared to an, you know an uh, iPad. <laughs> yeah a hoop and a pole <laughs> Uh, but in case, uh, listener, in case you haven't gathered, this is a motorcycle racing game mm -hmm. uh, that was published by Atlas uh, in 1993 uh, and developed by Genki. Um, the, we're talking about both games, uh, GP Part 1, which came out in 1993, and GP 1 Part 2, which came out just why a year not, later why not in 94. GP 2? I don't know what GP1 means. I mean, I think, I think GP stands something. for Grand Prix. I know, right. But what does the one stand for? Maybe it's like Formula One. Maybe. Like in it's, motorcycle racing. It's like the division. I or would whatever. imagine it has to do with that because these are the these are the bikes. These are the motorcycles, the machines. They don't even really call them motorcycles. They call them machines. Right. That can do 300 kilometers and these these are the guys that like lean way over and drag their knee on the pavement while they're turning and stuff i mean it's i mean what an why, extremely fucking difficult sport but why not call it like gp1 racing evolved I, or, or not gp1 part two i think it's <laughs> yeah. probably because it was published by atlas mm. in the early 90s yeah. you know what i mean because yeah. it's like i have a feeling that was just like a localization mm. thing right yeah. like where it's like uh, we haven't, cause I don't even know what Atlas had like released in the West that early? at yeah, that I time. I, I mean, I know they had, but yeah. like, it, obviously it's pre persona. So, um, I don't know. I, but I have a feeling that has a lot to do with it. Like, and, and I don't know what the names of these games are in Japan. Uh, so I wish I did. I'd probably make a good podcast, huh? <laughs> if I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't. Well, um, if you were to compare your experience with these games to a movie or a celebrity, what would they be? 
Mine uh, this week was for GP one. It was Star Wars: A New Hope, mm. and uh, for GP two, Empire Strikes Back. Because I felt like the first one was really good. If that's your thing, I thought it was well implemented. I thought it was leaps and bounds better than the Kawasaki games. There was a mini map. There was a tachometer. There was a gear shifting. There was multiple bikes. There was different things you could do to upgrade. Yada yada yada. Great game. I thought the presentation of the second one was better. Yeah. I thought the controls for me were easier. Yeah. To handle. Yeah. They. They made such a, in my mind, such a drastic improvement on the controls, on the control, yeah, on dude. everything, homie. Like graphics, controls, everything in the second game. One less than a year later, yeah, was better. Like by orders of measure, better than the first one. And yeah. I just couldn't believe the difference. I was like, I played GP one. I was like, okay, this was fine. I don't want to have to slog through another one. It was a fresh experience, yeah, and it just had more of that kind of polish to me, and it made it look a lot better, and so that's why I kind of likened it to Empire. I, and it's brutal. And it's brutal, much like Empire. Very is. hard to take because, like, it leaves you sad. Yeah, it definitely <laughs> left me sad because, like, I agree with you, man. GP two is like comparing comparing GP one part two to uh, one. Uh, you're right. They like do so much like in, in GP one, I never knew if the brake was working I, or not. I know. I, I mean, no... it was just like, is the brake work? Is there a brake button? I, and I had to like go and look in the manual and the manual was like, yeah, it's B. And I'm like, are you, are you sure, are you sure? it's B? I just <laughs> used, I just <laughs> used. <laughs> I don't just think so. Lift it off of A. I, yeah, I downshift. Lit, yeah. lit off the gas. Oh, so you were doing manual? Yeah. Motherfucker! <laughs> holy God! You fucking beast! I was downshifting to slow down around the sharp turns because the brake didn't work. Good Lord, man. You were playing in, like, hardcore mode. Yeah, it's it, like... If you wrecked, did you, like, reset done. the game? Wow, man. <laughs> if I wrecked... Wreck, it's hardcore. You can't turn it off. <laughs> no, if I wreck, <laughs> I just got back up, shifted down into first, and started over. Damn, that's awesome. Like, I'm like... I'm impressed. Well, I mean, I didn't do well. But still, you attempted. I saw it as an option. I was like, don't think so. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I only do that in racing games. I'm... Very confident. In One of the things I really many. enjoyed about that was the fact that the gear shifts were on the shoulder buttons. Yeah, L and so R. downshift was L and upshift was R, cool. and it was it, it was accessible. It was really kind of easy to use. Yeah, but does add the you know you got to manage your tachometer and you've got to manage your RPMs and you've got to know when to downshift turns. while you're turning and. I wanted courses. to see what that was like, and it was hard. Those fucking courses, courses were me, nuts. Me trying to choose in a game I know I'm not going to care about or like when I see automatic and manual, it's the same feeling I get at the ATM when it's like English or Spanish. I could probably do Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> if not, I'll just restart it. Did you do manual? No. But I, and I never choose Spanish either, but I think about it like probably could do One that. One of these days. I'm not going to. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, there was no clutch. You know, I didn't have to like hold down Y every time I wanted to shift gears or something. And let off at the right time. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't your, your rider just goes flying <laughs> off the bike. You go up a hill, so you just start going dip back down. <laughs> but man, I agree with the things you're saying about like part two, just feeling like like an actual like a good sequel. If if I were a kid and into this racing and into motorcycles, Grand Prix, that kind of thing, super bikes. Mm -hmm. And I bought the first one and then bought the second one. I would have been ecstatic mm -hmm. at the changes. Like, I would have been thrilled by the changes that they did. They added music in mm -hmm. while you're racing, which is like from all like the racing games that we played, where it's just like, this, yeah. this I mean, it's like the soundtrack is just the bike. I'm gonna jump ahead of myself for yeah. our bad things. The Please. engine noise in the first one it was bad. Was like nothing yeah. I've ever. F it was literally somebody. <laughs> it really was. 
Like it's it. Like I, I just sat there and listened because I was like, "Is this really just a dude making <laughs> it's a mom hack?" I, I, I really think it MP3s. is. <laughs> it's like Peter Griffin does engine noises. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> just the hearing, just the hearing the music was like weirdly exciting because we played so many racing games where they're just like eh, it's a racing game it's more like realistic if we don't play music while they're racing <laughs> which is like obviously just a cop out that they don't want to like we don't want to fuck with music. The music so that was like legitimately exciting and it was like oh this is great um they added split screen multiplayer in gp1 part right, two yeah which i mean Good on them, but mm-hmm. that good yeah. lord, I can't imagine <laughs> fucking trying God, that. No. I feel like you might be losing some frames. <laughs> yeah, in, well, in the in the two in the split screen for sure, and you're definitely losing height too. And it's like in a game where oh, here's God, I assumed it would be side by side, no, not top down. No, not, it's split horizontally. Oh no, yeah, it's no, split horizontally. I don't like that at all. And uh, one change that they made from Jeep from I'm just say one to two. Yep. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> I endorse one, this. One thing they changed from one to two that like I felt like it was a move back, a step backwards, was in in one they would give you indicators. Arrows would pop up oh, being God, like that was Hobie, on, right turn coming up. That was and you on my like, list. Kind of Loop the loop, sorta. <laughs> like weird shit. In two, they're just There's like a snake. Yeah. <laughs> into the garbage chute, fly boy. Yeah. You're on your fucking own, man. Oh man, that bothered me a lot. Oh my God, I was like, I where's my it. arrow? I was like, God, I ran right off the first turn. Oh yeah. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> where's my indicator? Nope, we didn't Why? give you that. Why? Look at the mini map. You're just gonna have to look at the fucking mini map. Which is like in a better position, I, I feel mean, like. that's they a great idea. A Take your eyes off the road right. so you can look at the, right. It's like driving with your phone. <laughs> nah, I'm just going to watch a movie. Driving, I'm, probably, I'm going maps. straight. I'll be All fine. Right. This, this yeah. is fun. <laughs> <laughs> but I miss those arrow <laughs> indicators that popped up Agreed. so that, bad that in the second one. Actually, spoiler came up on my bad list. of M- Me too. Yeah, for sure. Why would you leave that out? That, yeah. was, that was one thing I noticed about the first one right away. And like, I like yes. that they tell you this. And yeah. it was the shape of they the arrow to, so to indicate <laughs> what's coming. Right. What kind of Not turn just a left be. and a right yeah, turn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like an S shape right. and a what, you know, that yeah. was really a nice touch in the first yes. game. To take it completely out of the second one is just after having done so many things to improve upon it for the second one, I just boggled my mind. And they removed collision in the second game, which was like, again, why did you do that? You made so many like good steps forward, and then you made these decisions where it's like, uh, you're taking collision out of the game, and it's like, oh, but that makes it really boring because that essentially right. just you're doing a time trial mm-hmm. just with ghosts. Yeah, <laughs> and, yep. it's, and it's like this is stupid. Uh, yeah, man, that was... I, I don't know. I don't know. There were some decisions made that weren't great for the second one, but I still think it was the better of the I two agree. just because it yeah. was more polished. I agree. They also, um, in the second game, I don't like... They changed the way you upgrade your bike. Uh, instead of like getting money at the end of each race... Uh, at the end, I think of like four races, you get the option to change what motorcycle club you're in, right? And that determines what bike you can ride. Mm-hmm. And if you do horribly, like I did, and finish last place four races, like I did, you get like one option, and it's like uh, you're in blue club. <laughs> you don't get to love blue. Club. I noticed the bike was a lot different it's from a red club to blue club. club. Yes. <laughs> It's yeah. a special club for special <laughs> riders. I like it better when it's like, hey, you lost a bunch, but here's some money. Buy some parts and build a better bike and you'll do better. My cat's breath smells like cat food. <laughs> I'm on Blue Club. <laughs> is that an achievement? <laughs> <laughs> it is now. Dave, what about you for a movie or a... Uh, I chose Chef... Tetsuya Wakuda 
as uh, as my uh, celebrity. Mm -hmm. And I think he counts as a celebrity because he has a Wikipedia page no, no, and he's it. had a restaurant in Sydney, Australia since the 80s. And the reason I know this is because in GP1 Part 1, and you're racing in Australia, on the signs in the background, it says Tetsuya. And I'm like, what is that? Type, type, type. First result. <laughs> First result. Wow. Tetsuya. Restaurant. Sydney, Australia. You know you've like, arrived shit. when your advertisement <laughs> makes it into a video. Yeah, game. that's just a Japanese name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And the restaurant's like, that's the one he means. <laughs> ah, so he means He played this game is like... You know how I get free advertising. <laughs> if we name the restaurant after the sign in this game, <laughs> anybody who plays it knows where to eat. All these 10 year old boys will be flocking to my restaurant in Australia. I can't wait to have that weird fish. What are we going <laughs> to serve? What's on that sign in Pac Man Part 2? Yeah, eat hamburger. Big hamburger. Boom. But the we'll hamburger is big hamburger. You. Yeah. <laughs> So that's who I chose. Who did you choose, Tyler? Uh, I chose Days of Thunder. Mm. Yeah, man. I almost went there, too. <laughs> Just because it feels close up and hot. <laughs> <laughs> you could play this Speaking game Speaking of Australia, it's Nicole Kidman, right? Yeah, there, yeah, you, there go. you go. Very perfect. You could easily play this game on a diner table with uh, sweet and low and salt <laughs> sugar packets. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, we've named some good things and bad things, but we'll round out that list. I think I call I covered most of mine. Um, it, it again, I was looking at this one through the lens of having just played the Kawasaki challenges. Same. Um, so this felt like a legitimate racing game with various tracks, options, automatic manual, different bikes, different upgrades, things that you can do to make it feel like a, a real racing experience. Um, I felt that the game was easy to understand, you pick it up and play. If especially if again, if you're into the genre, mm -hmm. it should immediately click with whoever. Um the addition of the mini maps. Yeah. You know, that we did not have this before. Right. I distinctly remember saying that we I was Needed missing them. it. <laughs> yeah. Uh and then um And Kawasaki you mean, yeah. One of the other things that I found Aside from the fact that the second game was superior to the first in a lot of ways, um, I thought it was neat in GP1 Part 2, you could actually change the names of the of your opponents. Like, you could go in and change the names of the racers to whoever you want. I didn't go through it, but I could e see easily someone spending a lot of time... These are the kids I hate in school. ...making a list of people I want to fucking <laughs> slaughter in the, in the uh, racing. The girl I like likes this guy, yeah. so I'm going to make him, and I'm going to beat him. They're or better you could, at me in the video game, too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be my experience. Yeah, me, too. <laughs> you could name them after, you know, sexual terms, anything you want. Yeah, yeah. So it's a little level of customization there that you don't see a lot. That is true. Um, so I thought that was a neat, neat addition. Yeah. And that's my list of good things. I like the cutscenes in, par in mm -hmm. part two. Uh, I, that surprised me because it's like, that not only surprised me, it was one of those things where it's like, shit, man, someone could have made like, someone could have made a true like racing RPG because like they're like in between races and stuff. Um, there'll be these cut scenes where like one of the other racers will come up to you and like, mm -hmm. and they'll, and it's animated, uh, not well, it's a couple frames, right. but I mean, it's animated well enough for a super Nintendo in 1994 and like, they'll like challenge you to a race. And it's like, I could really see like, if that were pushed, that could be really cool where it's like, you're forming these rivalries and there's like a narrative to it. Like that could be really cool. Right. And the racing's much easier, <laughs> you know, or, or you could do it where it's like the racing's as hard as you want it to be, where yeah. you have like, and you could change difficulty in these you games. You can change the difficulty. I played on easy and it was still fucking Very soul fucking crushingly hard. hard on part yes. two. I can't stress enough how like, how like difficult I felt like part two was because it was like without having those indicators and just relying on the mini map in memory for courses that I'm fucking refused to memorize. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, man, it's fucking, it's hard. Yes, that's, it is. That's on my list of bad things. Uh, not good things. I thought the music was good. 
like not just the addition of the music. Yeah. I thought the music itself was yeah, it was, was, pretty grooving. was nice. I liked it. It was no hook. It sure as fuck Few was things not are. hook. Yeah. But it was it was good music. Tyler? But the backgrounds all look pretty samey. I felt like I was racing at the same <clears throat> theme park every time. Ferris wheels and green and just For sure. Yeah. Just sort of which I guess that's not super important. You're not really looking at that. Sure. I just feel I like think it, it at should. least make it like a little different. Like, did they, if they ever did these races at night, that would be neat if they had like nighttime. That would be cool. That gives me, that makes my butthole pucker just thinking about like how hard <laughs> it is during the day already. Like, <laughs> Well, hell, as much control as I had, fuck it. Yeah. I'll just drive it blind. God. <laughs> so where did it lose you or where did it win you? I mean, again... Right off the bat, I it, it won me over just because of the difference from the Kawasaki games. So I was immediately impressed with the fact that this had the things that I was expecting the other one to have. And then for the second one to even improve upon that, I was hooked immediately in that way. But the more I played, the less I really cared. Mm -hmm. I, I'm like you, Tyler. I got a little bored with it. Now, I didn't play as much as I probably could have, but I just I do tend to tire of that kind of thing fairly easily when it's kind of repetitive. You know, if you get into something like a Mario Kart or a Donkey Kong R Junior Racing or whatever, you know, Diddy Kong Racing, I should say, you know, when there's other things to do, other things to experience, and it's in 3D, you know, those don't bore me, but this this kind of stuff just does if it's it's like cruising usa yeah you know i it's fine for a while right but then you just get sick of it yeah because i i mean i don't want to put words in your mouth but for me it's because i don't want to take the time i'm not enjoying it enough that i want to take the time to get better at it for sure it's like the opposite of cuphead for me where it's like man this is challenging and i enjoy this challenge because it is because I'm enjoying it's fun. Mm. It like it's engaging. It's beautiful, it's unique, it's engaging, it's challenging. It's all the things that make a game good and make you want to stick with it. Right. Again, if I were a huge fan of the genre, I might feel differently. Maybe. <clears throat> but I'm not getting transported to this world of GP racing. Right. It's just a fucking game. Right. It's just a video game. Yeah. And it, it, I just didn't care enough to want to keep playing. Yeah. Girl same. <laughs> right. Yeah. It lost me on both games when I'm trying to qualify. I finish one lap. I look up. It's like, fuck, I got to do two more of these? Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. So it's like, yeah, no, I can't. I can't. It's not. I just do not enjoy this stuff. I feel so thoroughly. Even the thought of three laps to qualify was just like, I'm, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> um, it kind of got I got on board. I the first game I loved starting it up because like you could tell that there was like a level of them giving a shit and mm. caring about it cuz mm -hmm. like the the intro Definitely. is like damn this is kind of awesome. I was like is this going to be an awesome game? Because like the music is good mm -hmm. and like the graphics are look really good. All the options. And then they and show you all the different bikes and it's like not like Kawasaki fucking super bike challenge <laughs> where it's like you know PNGs of you know the Caribbean and shit right. where it's like there's oh a fact God, about a beach. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like okay, all right. Sweet. This is like exciting and uh -huh. I do really think no. They Napoleon do. exiled somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I do really think they do a good job of like presenting it in an exciting fashion. Mm. But I do agree with you guys. It 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 gets. I'm coming around on earlier. I was like, I don't know if it was boring. It gets it it does get tedious, and it gets tedious for me, especially when it's like I'm gonna be in 16th place. And there's nothing that I can do to not yeah. be not 16th place. And at that point, it's just like going through the motions to finish, to do the requisite laps, to finish the course, to go yeah, to the next course exactly. where I will get 16th place. <laughs> See, I just need like one more thing for me to like a game like this. Mm. 
road rash. I need to be able to hit people who are coming up on me. Sure. Okay, then I'm going to play it. Mm. I like Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. I need someone chasing me, mm. trying to wreck me into the wall. Like a secondary objective yeah. kind of thing. Give me yeah. wi- wipe out. I like wipe out. Give me a weapon to blast the car in front of me. Or do you like tricks and stuff. Yeah. I mean, even. Give, give me something that's not just going in a weird circle. Sure. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I get that. God, those Need for Speed games where you got the yeah, special I, crashes I like the, and shit. They're, they're yes. Few and far oh, between. Yeah. Yes. God, I played the. the what, which one was that? It, I'm. A, it's not Hot Pursuit. I think that it was I'm, two, wasn't it? It was. It was wasn't it the one before Hot Pursuit? I can't remember. Maybe I'm getting it mixed up. They, hot Pursuit was my fucking jam. My man. brother and I, I love put the shit fucking out. Hot I think Pursuit. It, it was, one of the country roads where the cops yes. are like, pull over. Yes, dude. And they're Dukes of Hazard. Yeah. <laughs> Cop yeah, cars. Yeah, that game fucking rule. It was it was Paradise City. Oh, okay. I think, but they had uh, they had takedowns, you know, and you could like you get points for better crashes and knocking people off of cliffs uh-huh. and shit and. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. I'm, give me, I'm give me all something in. else. Yeah. I, I, don't, get, I don't want a straight simulation. Give I me. turn into something else entirely when I'm playing that game. <laughs> like, fuck, I'm going to get you, motherfucker. <laughs> ah! Very good. So, buy, rent, birthday. If you're a fan of the genre, I think it's a buy. For me personally, if you're, if you're a big fan, it would have been a rent, a if even that. I mean, yeah, for me, nothing. Possibly a rent for the second one for the battle mode. Yeah. And that other than that, n- none of the above. To be honest, I wouldn't have given this a second look. Nah. It's just not my thing. Yeah, I wouldn't have either. I would have seen it on the on like the shelf and yeah. been like, I know exactly what that is, and I am 10 and I don't want to fuck with that. Mm-hmm. But somebody out there feels the opposite. They're into sure. it. They love it. They're going to have fond memories of how they played this for hours. Sure. And, yeah, and I of completely understand why. Sure. And yeah, I think these, I think these games have merit. It's they, just, but they also have it's um, niche. demographics. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So. I think it's niche. Yep. Even even inside the racing genre. Yeah. Because I mean, there are pretty broad. Mario Kart, which was brought up earlier, that is a broad... Oh, that's Racing something game. everyone can that's, love. That's, and it's designed that way, yes, you know? Yes, exactly. Uh, and that game, that was developed, they were, it was going to be a motorcycle racing game. Mm-hmm. And then they went to karts. Uh, and I'm trying to, I saw a great video on it. This has been a while back. But I think the reason they did that was because um, the speed. I think it was a speed issue because, like, the carts in Mario Kart, they're carts. They're, they, they go slowly mm-hmm. so that you can have a chance to read the, tr- the course because mm-hmm. you can read a course in Mario Kart. And you cannot read a course. You can't read a. You cannot this. read a course in this game and in, in either of these. Well, games. and then Mario Kart HP. really, truly introduced it. Introduced, I should say. That drift mechanic right. that makes it a completely different game for the right reasons. Sure. Right. And so, the power I mean, ups. I mean power like, ups that and, kind of stuff is like that's a wild card element. That's yep. just kind of so fun. That's what makes it different. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah I gotta fantastic have one more games. Dave, what about you, Byron Birthday? <clears throat> uh none of none of them. None. Yeah, none. And it's like I said, it's not because I think it's a bad game. I, I think these are both pretty good games. It's they're just they're not for me. Yeah. So I'm a pass dog. We should add pass. We should we should add pass, pass. it by. Yeah. Um, as one of the choices, by yeah. rent birthday or pass it by. If I'd have gotten, <laughs> excuse me, I just got choked up. <clears throat> if I'd have gotten this for my birthday, I'd have been <laughs> um grateful for the gift, but not happy. I yeah. think I would have been like, "Do you know me?" I will take the spanking. <laughs> this still Fuck has this. <laughs> this, still, uh, this mom. This still has the plastic on it. Toys R Us will take it back. <laughs> I can trade it for a game I want. You will play that game, and you will thank your. Aunt. You're gonna write her a thank you note right now. <laughs> I'll write her the note. We can I'll lie about it. <laughs> she won't know. So she's going to come over and play it with me. She'll never fucking know. <laughs> That'd be the worst, wouldn't it? <laughs> Let's play that motorcycle game that I got you. Uh. <laughs> I bought one for my Super Nintendo, and I've gotten really good. I bet you're even better. Uh, are you, you bought me Super Metroid, I thought, right? <laughs> Super Metroid's right here. The, uh, the motorcycle turns over. into a girl. Yeah. <laughs> 
One of my friends came over and stole it. <laughs> <laughs> they were so jealous of that awesome gift. <laughs> I lost it in the game of Pog. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got any cheapos? I have a few. What you got? My first achievement is hopeless? No, I don't think so. Yes, damn it. And uh, <laughs> to get hopeless? I don't think so. Come in 14th place, which is not last place. I got that one. I'm like, can we, let's take a moment and explain <laughs> hopeless. We have to explain hopeless. Yeah. I fuck it. This is so goddamn fucking weird. And I love it because oh, yeah. of that. At the end of the race <laughs> in GP1, you finish the race and then you're greeted by a screen that has like a big giant blue motorcycle in the background. And then there's a blue box with a screen on it, like a big television screen. And on top of that screen, perched are these two women in, in swimsuits. Yes. And a message pops up on that TV screen, depending on how well you've done. And I also saw a lot of hopeless. <laughs> just, says, just says hopeless. And then they're smiling and just, congratulations, you suck. Sometimes they do say things like, Nice riding, according to videos I saw on YouTube. <laughs> right. But for me, hopeless. <laughs> I yeah. think one time it said, nice try. <laughs> never. You'll never get this. You'll never get this. <laughs> at least you're getting to look at our bikini models. Uh, my second achievement is like riding a bike. And to get like riding a bike, you... Look up from your game to watch Law and Order SVU for two <laughs> seconds and crash your bike into the pylon and just crash, <laughs> slide. I did. Sounds that like one. a personal achievement. I got that one too. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, last achievement of mine is the names have been changed to protect the innocent. And to get the names have been changed to protect the innocent, you change all the racers' names uh, in GP two. GP1 Part 2 to 70s porn star names. Okay. Like John Doe, Ron Jeremy, and so on. <laughs> That's all I got. What do you got, Dave? I've got a couple. I've got um, Swipe Left. In order to unlock Swipe Left, get the hopeless message after a race in GP1. <laughs> First. Uh, next achievement I have is Revolutionaries Per Minute. In order to unlock revolutionaries per minute, lap Castro in GP1. Mm. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. They also had a Lennon uh, in, G in GP1, but it was spelled like John Lennon. So I was like, damn it, man. Oh. If only they had. What happens when your, your motorcycle quits? Well, it's Stalin. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Hey, nice. <laughs> so are we in your achievements now? <laughs> uh, and my last achievement is expulsion. In order to unlock expulsion, upgrade your suspension to the maximum level. I would have liked to have gotten to the point where I could get a better suspension to see if I could curve better. That's what I did. That was my first choice. Yeah. And it was immediately like, oh, yeah, okay, I can feel this. <laughs> this is good. When you crash your motorcycle, you Trotsky back over onto it. <laughs> <laughs> I had three. Uh, the first one being, fuck you. That is when you fail to qualify to even race in the first place. I got that one. Second one, no, fuck you. That's when you fail to qualify on part two. I don't actually get to do a race. I got that one. And then uh, the last one being, eat a dick. <laughs> and you eat a dick when you get on that really fast straightaway on the first race of part two and you're having fun and you got that awful turn <laughs> that you wiped the fuck it's out and it's just, not fun anymore. <laughs> it is an almost a 180 degree <laughs> turn. I know exactly the one you're talking about. Yep. Me too. And the instruction manual, I feel like is helpful because like if you're not familiar with racing, they do give you like a, uh, Hey, do you not know how to race? Here's some tips. And it's like, they show you these little diagrams and they're like, break here, accelerate here. Like, like they show you where to break on the turn. Kind of like accelerate. at the go-kart place. In, yes. In Louisville. in Louisville. Yeah. However, 
it goes so fast that it's just like I mean I couldn't execute the yeah. I couldn't execute the turns correctly. I could get through the turn, but it's like the computer opponents are the fucking perfect man. Oh, they <laughs> they, they like, I they're was doing flawless. tools as the speed runs the whole time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. We want to see what price charting and flops you have to say. How much do you think uh, you guys? Uh, would pay or would have to pay if you wanted to buy GP1 used on the Super Nintendo. $14. 14 bucks. 18 bucks. Actual price of GP1 for the Super Nintendo loose on average, according to pricecharting.com at the time of this recording, is $13.01. There you go, Ian. Right. Almost right there. Only 99 cents over. Mm -hmm. What do you think about GP1 part du? That's what I kept wanting to say. Part du. <laughs> uh, 12 dollars. 12 bucks. Sounds some more. I'm going to say 25 dollars. 25 bucks. Actual price of GP1 part two for the Super Nintendo loose. On average, according to PriceCharting.com, at the time of this recording, is fifteen dollars and thirteen cents. I am the smartest man alive. <laughs> Just two dollars and twelve this cents. Time. Two dollars and twelve cents more than the original. So, based on that knowledge, I don't know the answers to this, <laughs> these questions either. So, I get to play Flopsy. What do you think Flopsy has to say? We'll do GP one. Uh, what do you think? How many stars does Flopsy give it? How common is this game? I will say GP1, I will say Flopsy gives it three stars and that it is common. Okay. <clears throat> three stars common. <clears throat> Excuse me. Goodness. I'll say I think three stars is right. Man, we're all at three stars because yeah. that's what I was going to guess too. But okay. I'll say uncommon. That's my I've answer. I've never seen or heard it. I think this is it. three stars uncommon just because I'm trying to think of like the publishing power Atlas would have had at the mm. time, uh, especially in the West. But I don't necessarily think it's very uncommon. Yeah. So three stars common. I'm, I'm with you on that. I'm going to try not to look at GP part two when I open this. According to the Ultimate Nintendo Guide to the SNES Library, 1991 mm -hmm. to 98. It's good shit. By Pat Contry. Uh, the ether's kicking in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Courtesy of Monster Mold Mike and a shadowy benefactor. Uh, mm. Break the binding God, on that. Every time. GP1, they gave it three stars. Ding, boys, ding, 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 ding. Winners. <laughs> Availability uncommon. Okay. I wasn't thinking about the publisher and that it was probably more popular in Europe because that's where that sport is more popular. So, yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. GP1 Part 2. What do you think Flopsy gave it? I have to assume that they gave it four stars. Going with four. Because for me, I would have given it an extra star just for the improvements they made. Okay. I don't know... Maybe three and a half is what they gave it, but I'm going to I'm gonna go for broke and say four stars, and I'm going to go kind of back on you guys' philosophy for this one as well and say uncommon. Okay. Okay. What do you think, Tyler? I think three and a half mm -hmm. uncommon. I'm going to go three and a half very uncommon. I don't know. It's always tough because it's like mm -hmm. I'm just uh, I'm just saying very uncommon because of the two dollar difference in price. Mm -hmm. But maybe that would be higher. Maybe maybe part two is more expensive because it's the more desirable game out of the two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I'll go three and a half. Very uncommon. According to the, <clears throat> I got it this time. You know, I know that you do. Ultimate Nintendo Guide to the SNES Library 1991 through 1998 by Pat Contry, mm. courtesy of Monster Mold Mike. Got it in And the Shadowy Benefactor. Crack. <sighs> Just the same crack. Mm. Lost my place. It's Clean fine. pages. Clean, fresh pages. What? GP1 Part 2. Two and a half stars. They thought it was worse. I wonder if it's because of the indicators. It might be because those uh. indicators. That's a all right. 
Oh. Availability, very uncommon. Wow. Nice. So here we go. I want to know. I want to read the synopsis. Are they reviewed by the same people? They are. KY. Okay. Our buddy KY. Um, they say, firstly, I love that they added music to the races. Girl, same. Um, there's a password save. Okay. Yeah, I forgot about that. That was a good, cool thing. And I will say that uh, Flopsy also says that GP1 is two-player simultaneous as well. I didn't, I didn't know that. I did see I that know. in the menus oh, okay. uh, as I well. Didn't I didn't that. think to mention it. My bad. I, I missed it. Sorry about that. Uh, let's see. So what do they not like? Unfortunately, what the developers took out wrecks all the good they did. Um, yeah, they mentioned the arrows being missing. Makes it worse, which I agree. Um, yeah, and that was pretty much it. Well, then we're at least as qualified as KY to be reviewing this game because they said the same things we said. Yeah, <clears throat> I, and I also... I still think it was a better game. I don't I don't think it deserved to lose a half a star based on those things. I kind of skimmed it. I don't know if they mentioned the collisions, but I mean, like, those taking those two things out... Um, Really does feel like two weird steps backwards. No, they do. They do mention you're not able to interact with the other racers, and and I agree with that. I I think that the good things outweigh the bad things, though. I would yeah. still say that part two is. I think it's a worse, a better game one. For it. Yeah. yeah. Shit, I might buy GP part two, GP one part two, knowing that it's very uncommon and yeah. fifteen dollars. I mean, it's true. Might as well. <laughs> Want them all anyway. <laughs> Maybe you could get a package deal. That'd be nice for both games for one low price. I, I might, I might write Atlas an email. <laughs> be like, hey, do y'all have, have any of those? Any of those in the I don't you do. Those GP parts right there. <laughs> I'll give you ten bucks for a copy of each one. Shh. Sold, new in box. <laughs> Ooh, ooh, nice. Tyler, I've had a lot of fun talking. To you guys about these motorcycle racing mm -hmm. video games mm -hmm. uh but before we close it out if you were to give this game these games do you have individual beards for nope. the, these games a beard what kind of beard would it be i'll give it the the fuzzy tan beard of a bootleg sonic the hedgehog okay they sort of have the same spirit but you know that collision and the speed and everything uh -huh. shit's not gonna be the same it's gotta be janky <laughs> so it's, like gonna, a, it's gonna look similar but it's gonna be janky so like an izzy's beard from izzy's uh yes search for the olympic, <laughs> the olympic ring. Ring. Yes. 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 <laughs> is that thing that thing that olympic torch thing that, so, that, that legally distinct sonic the hedgehog <laughs> game <laughs> Uh, Tyler, if you were to give this game a pair of glasses, mm -hmm. sums up how you feel about it, what kind of glasses would it be? Those amazing glasses that Dr. Robotnik is wearing mm. when he runs faster than Sonic at max speed uh -huh. <laughs> at the end of like Sonic 2 when his hands are in the air and Sonic cannot catch him running on his human feet. Well, humans are faster than hedgehogs. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. I, guess it's true. <laughs> I mean, let's not be That's ridiculous. Science. You're right. <laughs> I mean, Sonic's fast for a hedgehog. <laughs> That's all I got. Cool. I guess we're pretty good. We're coming up on two hours there. Wrap it. Thanks for listening, everybody. You can find the show on iTunes. Not for much longer on Stitcher. Stitcher. Yeah, Stitcher. not not for much longer on Stitcher. I found some shit out about Stitcher that I didn't know. Mm. Um, I, I listened to a podcast called the Jeff Gerstmann Podcast. It's a video game podcast. It's, it's, it's very good. Um, and he was talking about Stitcher shutting down. And he was talking about some stuff that I had never heard before. Where, like, Stitcher, apparently what they were doing was people would upload their content to, for Stitcher like we did. You know, we supply the feed, right, for Stitcher yeah. to pull the episode from. And what Stitcher was doing was pulling the episode and hosting it themselves. So that means it fucked over the metrics for, oh. for like, everybody because oh. it's, like, no one's seeing the downloads from the feed. 
Stitcher, it's Stitcher grabbed the file and they were hosting it themselves. Damn. Yeah, it's shitty. It's dirty as hell. And apparently they were running ads too. Oh, uh, yeah. Hell unless no. you were paying for like Stitcher Premium. So it's like, that's some fucking shit. Well, fuck yeah. them. So, yeah, fuck them. Oh. I didn't know any of that. Damn. Otherwise, uh, another company to say fuck you. Yeah, SoundCloud. Throw that in the fucking SoundCloud. Not SoundCloud. Heat. <laughs> yeah. So it's fucking Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube. Yep. There you go. Find our shit there. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Amazon. We're fucking taking a probably stand. Google Podcasts. Probably on there. Uh-huh. We're on, I know. Uh, I download us on uh, Audible. So Audible. There we go. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. We're on <laughs> Audible. Uh huh. Nice. Big time. They probably pull from Amazon. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, I think Podbean shits it out to everywhere, doesn't it? Our Podbean, I think, only shits Does, it out. Oh, to that's Spotify. right. You told me that. You told me. That. Yeah, everything else is our host. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so, hey, do you want to send us something uh, to try on the show? You send that to Tadpog Studios, Care of Nicole Nance, PO Box three seven eight five, Paducah, Kentucky four two zero zero two. Like some fun hats. Be, fun hats. Send us some fun hats. Some fun hats. We've never gotten fun hats. That's before. true. Just remember to be careful sending perishables because we never know when we're going to get to stuff, <laughs> and we've had plenty of. Like Zeus's stuff. Do not eat that. Don't eat the thing that I sent you because I sent it six months ago and it will give you botulism. (laughs) (laughs) And then, hey, we're taking more calls. Not today, but we have been. Um, Yeah. After we, I mean, at some point, I think we should do another all calls and have it uh, all calls the age of terrified Michelle. Where it's all thirty of her calls. Oh, well, that's the next one. Yes, we have we have thirty two <laughs> calls of hers to get through. And then, the, but there, to be fair, a lot of them are just short, you know, one shot. So it may not be as all consuming as we think. But that's still a that's if it if each call was one minute, that's thirty two minutes of Michelle's calls. I don't <clears throat> know what was said that made me think of this during this but i've recently rewatched army of darkness <laughs> like yeah. there was something there was something in there where it was like okay i don't know i thought of like what we could name the episode like terrified michelle's reign of darkness or something <laughs> okay and then okay. i got there so anyway it's absolutely like days of future Love past yeah and it'd, be, and it'd be apocalypse with michelle's face killing us or all the other x-men that are dead all the other hosts <laughs> marked through for dead well, we'll say that for- except for like um Beloved Adam, <laughs> the other one alive. Let's say that for Dave's The Future Past, where I just call uh, a bunch of times. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then we play those. <laughs> have you seen uh, Dave the Diver? Uh, okay, I have seen that. that it is a video game, and I've heard, I think, maybe Sandwich Pope Phil mention it. Looks pretty good. Looks but pretty I haven't good. played it. Yeah. Have you played it? No. no. I just saw the ad. I don't even know if it's out yet, but I do, I do want to definitely check that out. But other than that, uh, most importantly, we've got that Patreon. Yes, we do. Um, Tyler, this is the part of the show I'm going to have to start referring to as old business and new business, I think. Ah, but we don't cover new business until... (laughs) Next quarter. (laughs) Well, today's... Today's old business is, as always, going to be our list of executive producers. These are the fine folks that donate $20 or more per month to the show. Just... Just they just give us money, uh, and if you want to be like them or like all of our wonderful donors who give every month and help feed our children, uh, you could do so at patreon.com slash tadpog or pisstasters.com. Taste the piss, taste it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to hire a woman with an attractive voice, like a professional voice actor. <laughs> God damn to, it! To, I will I will get behind say, this expense. The piss. And I want that reverb, it, 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 <laughs> reverb, whispery, yeah. kind of windy. Yeah. Could we get Marilyn Henner on on, on cameo to say it? Booty do, <laughs> booty do, <laughs> taste the piss. I want this so badly, <laughs> so that every time we say pisstasters dot taste, taste the, the piss. piss. <laughs> 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 All right. Our executive producers are Usurper Grimm, Cousin David Galino, Plinko Nick Price, Cubicle Monkey, Enthusiast Jeff Miners, Master Cycle Baron Kevin Link, Joseph Phillips, Game Bug Prime Nathan Eaton, Matt Gentile, a.k.a. Gentle G, <gasps> Louisville Correspondent, Princess Consuela, Banana Hammock, Flavor Trick, Taryn Dahl, congratulations on your marriage and your ridiculously long title. 
Pinball Airplane playing Archmage. Chris Edler, we're sorry you couldn't be on this episode. Platinum member Brett Miller, Sandwich Pope Phil Hawkins, Nate from Utah, first time caller, Drink Smith, Joey Webster, Dig Dougie, Derek Pope Sandwich, Cody Phillips, and a new donation, new executive producer level donation from Massacre. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Hell yeah. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. We really appreciate it. Thanks as always. Yes. To you guys, to all of our donors, it's super generous of you to send us money in these trying times. Uh, thanks also, as always, to our very own Mr. Puzzles himself, Backlog Banisher Dane, for putting all of our U episodes up on YouTube every week just because he wants to do it. Get in on the conversation with us at bit.ly slash Discord. We are there all the time. we got our, a lot of our... Uh, fans and friends that we'd love to just visit with and talk to all day, every day, um, hearing about the cool things they're doing and the funny jokes they like to make. Uh, and if you would, just spread the word about Tadpog. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell your auntie that bought you GP <laughs> Racing <laughs> Part 2 to listen to Tadpog so she'll know better. Yes. Uh and tell her to get to know you a little better so she doesn't buy you shitty games. But now, Tyler, there is new business this to this day. Yeah. I have an update on the shirts. New business. I have an, up, I have an update on the shirts. Uh, we got a notification from our good buddy, Choctopus, to let us know that the shirts should have should be coming in. By, by the time this episode airs, we think I think the shirts will have been in, and they said as soon as they're in, they're going to start filling orders, getting them shipped. Uh, we still have some shirts available to buy. Uh, very you limited quantity. Your chance, a very limited quantity. Yeah. If you missed your chance to buy one when we were doing the promotion, uh, you can go to bossbattlesgg tadpog and pick up one of those. Very limited quantity, minus <laughs> one extra large. Right, Dave got one of the somebody. extra larges for a friend. Uh, a listener, a Patreon uh, oh, donor. Nice, great, excellent. So obviously, my friend. Yes, <laughs> it's, you we, give me money. Our You're friendship friend. is for sale. <laughs> our friendship is for sale. Uh, big thanks again to the entire team at BossBattles.gg for everything they did on this promotion. I cannot wait to get my shirt uh, and start wearing it proudly. And then also one last thing I'd like to mention. Uh, I had a guess on the Discord on the 3, 6, and 12 question I that, that I posed. It's a good guess. Uh, it was an excellent guess by Big Dick Pie Baker. Chris Vaughn uh, made a really, really good attempt, but unfortunately that was not the correct answer. Um, I just wanted, I felt like I should say something uh, about that. And the other thing I wanted to mention is I gave him a clue and everyone in the Discord a clue. If you want to know the answer and if you think you can are get, uh, concerned with it at all, I have hidden the answer to the question somewhere out there, and it is not in the show. Like, you don't have to go back and listen to past episodes of the show to find the answer. I've hidden the answer out there somewhere, and if you can find it... Get to work, Gunters. <laughs> if you can find it, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Hit me up if you find the answer and you're the first one to get back to me. Dancing. <laughs> I will I will uh I will do that. I will send you something from the big toy box. And by now I think this I don't know what the dates were. Um Paul's pinball tournament, was that coming up before we air this one? Yeah, it's okay. It's going on as it started today. It did. On okay. our recording okay. date. But so you missed that possibly, but uh Paul did a neat I just want to thank Paul for yeah. um putting up a little pinball contest we'll probably talk about the winner next week a uh, little little video pinball contest to see who can post the highest score the winner uh gets a was uh wins a twenty dollar um gift card from the game platform of your choice and uh everyone that enters the contest got entered into a drawing uh to be randomly picked to win something from my big toy box as well so um hopefully we will have the winners of all that lined out and if you were the winner congratulations and if not better luck next time and it, that it, that will be over on july 9th so that'll be before this publishes yeah. so 
One more great reason to join the Discord. Absolutely. You wouldn't have missed this. Bit.ly slash Tadpog Discord. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And, I mean, stuff, stuff like, like this, this happens. Exactly. Stuff like this comes up at random yeah. all the time on the Discord, and it's fun stuff that people really do yeah. enjoy participating yeah. Phil in. Phil did that punch out tournament. Oh, yeah. I did the double dragon thing. Those things Paul's doing really the hit. Thing. I and mean, they were fun and popular and yeah. very well received. And none of this costs you any money, guys. Yeah. You can come listen participate in that's why we say get in on the conversation because we don't charge anything to be on the discord we not it's just a discord yeah. with a bunch of different chat rooms and different things going on that we would love for you to come and visit so yeah and uh, then also cool. not miss out on the opportunity to compete in fun tournaments yeah. so it's a lot faster on discord than it is on the, the podcast yeah because we're, there's like we're a, a week, week delayed yeah. Yeah. yeah so um yeah for sure uh, and of course, we're always there to talk to you, answer any questions you may have, even if they're personal questions. I just prefer you keep those in direct messages if you would. And I get, do not guarantee you that I will answer them. Okay, I have said enough. That was old and new business covered. I think I'm done. Okay, well, uh, Ian, who is, uh, what's our theme song? It's uh, Moves by Sick Yeah, I haven't done that in a long time. It's curveball. Not the Ian. Um, Moves by by whom? Sycamore Drive. Sycamore Drive? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Where can a link to that track be found? Tadpog.com. Yeah. In the show notes. Hey, you guys want to close it out? As an RPM sound. <laughs> um, it's good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So until next time. Capricorn. <laughs> 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 Oh, I thought you said a European. <laughs> <laughs> what accent was that? European. European. <laughs> <laughs> they have one European. accent there. <laughs>We didn't pick a game. Oh, you're right. Let's do that, that for the, the singer. singer. <laughs> are we are we going to do True are Lies are yet? Are we recording? We can do yes, True Lies. Yes, we're, we're recording. Okay. We can do True Lies now. That's yeah, true. that's what I was going to ask. Or do, do you want to randomize it or do True Lies? I'm cool to do True, true Lies. True Lies sounds good to me. You okay. Wanna, I mean, that was on the docket. It was on the docket. I'm just lies. sitting here like, it's what can we talk weeks? about? Yeah. Oh, fuck. Is that it? Is that the stinger? <laughs> that's yeah. a pretty good one, right? It's yeah, funny. it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that yeah. joke we pulled on all the listeners where they thought we weren't going to like... They thought we were going to get them so good. Then we got them so good. So good. <laughs> Y'all done got got. There's a good like 30... You tasted that piss, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs>